Microprocessors generate a lot of heat. We need to remove the heat to ensure that the CPU works properly. We're going to look at the basic physical principles that govern heat removal in microprocessors. We have three basic physical mechanisms for heat transfer in bodies. Conduction means molecular motion. So, for example, heat carried through a solid body. Radiation is a form of electromagnetic energy that transfers heat. So this can be done in a vacuum. Newton's law of cooling talks about convection, which relates to bulk fluid motion. That could mean water, but in our case it, it often means air. Air acts as a fluid for our purposes. Newton expressed his law in this way. The rate of heat loss is proportional to the difference in temperature between a body and its surroundings. We can write the formula mathematically like this. Q is the thermal energy. So the left hand side of the equation describes the derivative of the thermal energy as a function of time. On the right hand side that derivative is equal to the heat transfer coefficient H times the surface area A of the body times the change in temperature. To demonstrate Newton's law of cooling, we'll recreate an experiment that was originally done by Dr. Jural Walker for his amateur scientist column in Scientific American. Newton's law of cooling tells us that the rate of cooling depends upon the temperature difference between the ambient and the body. When we add cream to coffee, the coffee cools down a little bit. So that predicts that the coffee with cream should cool down a little more slowly than black coffee. So here I have mugs, a thermos of coffee, cream, handy dandy thermometer, and pen and paper to write down the results. Let's give it a try. I'll move the paper out of the way and I'll pour some coffee. Fill each cup to about the same height. There we go. We can put in a little more. Let's measure the temperature just to see that they're the same. One fifty nine, one sixty two. Let's try one more time. One fifty nine, one fifty seven. Okay. Let's put some cream in this one. Let's measure again. 161, 159. We make note of that and wait a minute. We're now at two minutes. Black coffee reads 153. Cream, 147. We're at the five minute mark. Black coffee is at 146, cream 143. 10 minutes, black coffee 138, cream 134 and a half. 15 minutes, black coffee is 131, cream coffee 128. And 20 minutes, black coffee. 123.5. Cream coffee, 123.5. That seems like long enough to enjoy a cup of coffee. So let's plot the data and see what we came up with. Here's our data. The blue dots are the black coffee. The orange dots are the coffee with cream. 
you can see that the two track each other pretty closely. But the coffee with cream started out at a slightly lower temperature, ended up at the same temperature. Now, of course, our data has a little bit of noise due to measurement errors and so forth. But I think we can conclude that Newton's law does hold here. And I'm sure that Isaac Newton rests more soundly knowing that we have validated his theory using two cups of coffee. What does this mean in practice? We're going to use heat sinks to help us remove heat from a CPU. The heat sink is attached to the CPU. A typical heat sink has a lot of fins that give it a large surface area. If you remember, the surface area is part of the Newton's Law formula. Having a large surface area makes it easier to extract heat. We're pushing the air out into the ambient, and if we move the air in the ambient, we can reduce the average temperature of the air around the heat sink. By moving in new air, we keep the temperature of the air a little lower. This helps us improve the rate of cooling in the CPU. But we'll find ourselves in a quandary. On the one hand, keeping the ambient temperature low helps us to cool the CPU faster. So we want to put the CPU in a cool environment. On the other hand, cooling that air, removing the heat from the ambient, requires burning energy, such as an air conditioner. So when we're designing, for example, a data center, we want to think carefully about how much energy we use in air conditioning, cooling down the room, and how much benefit we'll get in keeping the microprocessor cool. To review, Newton's law of cooling tells us that the rate of cooling of a body depends upon the difference in temperature between the body and its ambient. This helps us understand how to efficiently remove heat from a microprocessor. And now, I'll get back to my coffee.